Bonjour. Bienvenue, mes amis. It's, uh, I think it's hello, welcome back, my friends, in French. I'm working on it, uh, so. Okay, well, welcome back, guys and gals. In this video, we're going to build a historical database table type of thing that I think will be pretty cool. And the best part about this video is that I don't think we need to use the chart data area at all. I think that we can just build this whole thing right here. So let's get that started. What do we want to go in this table? Well, the first thing that we're going to want to go in this table are dates and probably the session type, whether it's a training camp or in season. So let's start that process. We'll start off to the far left here, and I'm just putting this kind of in a, in a random place. We'll say this is date, and this is session, or uh, we'll say season phase, actually. Season phase. And now we are going to do a giant formula. And there are a couple of different ways to go about this, depending on the flexibility that, that you want to have. <laughs> one is super complicated. One, I'm not going to go through that one. Maybe I will. If you ask for it, then, then I will. But for now, we're going to do a less complicated, which is still really complicated version. But it's nothing that we haven't done before. We're going to get a unique list of dates for the athlete that we pick. And we want to sort them, and we want them to be in between this date range, and we want to consider um, what session types or what season phases uh, we're, we're in. And to do that, we're going to hop right in and go equals, equals sort, open parenthesis unique, open parenthesis filter. And we've already seen this where we have... All three of these functions, they just need an array. Like, what do we want to go here? And for us, we want the dates to go here. So let's go to our testing data, and let's select the dates. So that's what's going to go there. And what we need to do is we need to determine the criteria for these dates to show up. Comma. So condition one is going to be for when the athlete's name is equal to the athlete that we pick. So let's just do that for now. Say we want all these dates to be sorted. We want them to be unique too. We don't want duplicates. So we want a unique sorted list of dates for when the athlete's name is equal to, and let's go to our testing dashboard and we'll select the athlete's name that we pick up here and close the parentheses and click enter. Well, there we go. That's simple. So we have all the dates. However, if we want to adjust these dates and the data that comes along for the ride by selecting this date range and by checking these boxes, we're going to have to do a couple of other things. The first is give it more criteria based on the date range. So for example, this date range right now is through 11-7-2019. This data goes all the way through 10-17-2020. So let's add another piece of criteria here. We can do a comma after a to a equals a3, and then say for condition two, and when, so we only want the dates for when the athlete's name is equal to, or for the athlete that we pick, and when, we'll go to our testing data, when the dates, for now I'm just gonna say equals one, comma, and also when the dates equal one, and click enter. That's not what we actually want. We want to get the dates for when the for the athlete that we pick when the date for the date range that where the dates are greater than or equal to testing data b to b the dates are greater than or equal to our start date that we set right here and our dates are less than or equal to our end date that we set right here and we can click enter now we only have the dates through the date range that we picked. And if we expand this date range, let's say it's 11, 7, 2020, well, obviously it changes these charts and it changes our dates down here too. And if you wanted to, you could have two separate date ranges for each of these things or two completely separate toggles. I just figure that they're in the same section and I don't want to overcomplicate it. So let's just keep this controlling everything in this section. Next thing. Okay, so we get it, right? We want dates within a date range, but 
we want to only include either train, like we want to be able to pick, say, hey, I don't want training camps, or hey, I don't want in-season stuff, or whatever the case might be, and while that works for the charts right now, it doesn't work for the dates. So the way that we can do this is we can add in the same criteria that we did before, where we go comma, add another condition, open parenthesis, because now we're using an or statement. We're not using ands. Ands are denoted by the commas. We want this condition to be true, and this condition to be true, and this condition to be true, and either like and we want either of these conditions uh, to be true um, to bring back the requisite uh, results. So let's go to our testing data. Oh, it, it got out of the formula. Let me go back in here. I don't like when this happens space go to our testing data and now we need to know when the season phase will say is equal to one close the parenthesis plus open parenthesis when the season phase is equal to one again and we'll close the parentheses and click enter and we'll get an error because that's not what we actually want we want when the season phase is equal to not one but it's equal to this when the checkbox is checked and we already set up in our chart data area we already set that up here we said if the checkbox is true show this name if it's not then don't so we can exchange the one for this name here which only shows up when it's checked and then we can exchange this one for this name of our event which only shows up when the box is checked and we can click enter and remember, you might have five or six or 10 different events. In that case, you would just add another plus parenthesis, and you would just pretty much add this over and over again, um, referring to each of the cells uh, where you would say, if the checkbox is checked, then bring it in. If not, don't. But we only have two, so we're just going to do two of them. And we can click Enter now. And we still have all of our dates. If we uncheck one, maybe I'll bring this up and I'll make this smaller if we can see it all in the same thing. Okay, we can. If I uncheck training camp, 1017 went away, and another one did too. And if we check it back, we see it adds back in here. Now, season phase. How do we add that? Well, we can actually do a couple of things here. There are two different, from here, there are two to three different strategies that we can use. The first is more complicated, more flexible. The second is less complicated, <laughs> less flexible, and there are some in between. I'm going to use an, an, an in-between one, but it's also very much less complicated than others. What we can do here is with this function, this array that we have bringing back, which is, or this range, right? This range this range 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 this is only dates if we want to add in another set uh, another thing that comes back that is uh, that's associated with these dates we can choose multiple different columns and we can do that by using curly open brackets so i'm going to use a curly open bracket here not cur a curly open bracket and a curly close bracket and once we do that, and I'm going to put it on the other side too, this is saying, okay, you can choose more than one column and separate them by commas. So right now we're using, we're getting the dates, comma. Now what else do we want to bring back? If we go back to our testing data, we can select our season phase right here. And now we're bringing two things back within the range argument, and then when, and we know that because we're still within the first comma. When we click here, we start saying, oh, okay, we only want both of these things when all this stuff is true, which we already defined. And if we click OK or Enter, now we have two pieces of information coming back. Right? And, and everything will still work. If we uncheck training camps, there go the training camps, and so on and so forth. So this is fine. If we wanted to pick every single column that we wanted in our table, we could separate them by
by commas. We'll get into this a little bit later. I don't want to get into it now. I'm going to set this up in a in the most simple way possible after this. In the next video, we'll, we'll do that. And then in the video after that, I'll show you how to make it super complicated, but also super flexible. But that's it for this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel and you're enjoying the content, please make sure to subscribe. And one thing about me today, let's go with favorite type of sandwich. And leave your favorite sandwich in the comment, comments below. I have a few, but I don't really think that you can beat the classic PB&J. PB&J is my go-to. Another one, more of a snack sandwich, is I call it the PBB, peanut butter and banana. Yeah, probably haven't heard that one too often, but that's that's another good one. Got some classics uh, with, with the meats and stuff, but nothing will ever beat the PB&J in my books, so that's the one I'm going with. Again, leave yours below. I'm, I'm interested to know what you guys like to eat from a sandwich perspective. And thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.